Hey everyone, this is the first video in the embryology section under cardiology. By the end of this video, you'll find out how the heart goes from looking something like this to having four chambers along with blood vessels and you'll be in a position to label all the structures all by yourself. So firstly, let's see how the circulatory system forms. The heart starts beating spontaneously around week 4. So before that, the heart basically looks something like this. This is known as the heart tube. The main goal of the heart tube is to provide oxygenated blood to the brain. So blood in the heart tube flows in this direction. So now the central part of this tube will become the heart. So we know that arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart. Here's a way to remember it. A for arteries and A for away. So the bottom part of this tube will end up becoming future veins and the top part of this tube will end up becoming future arteries. Now soon, the heart tube will start changing its shape. The middle part of this tube will start bulging. This bulged portion is going to give rise to the future heart. Now in the heart, veins empty blood into the atrium and from there blood moves into the ventricles. Ultimately, blood from the ventricles move into the arteries. So this blue portion out here is going to be our future atria and the pink one out here is going to be the future ventricles. Having gotten a fair idea of this whole thing, let's move on to find out what are the anatomic names for these embryological structures. So firstly, I'm going to make this heart tube look something like this so that it's easier for us to understand. Let's start with the easiest one. The part that's going to form the ventricles is known as primitive ventricle. And the part that's going to form the atria is known as primitive atrium. The red structure on top is like a trunk carrying blood outside the heart. So, since it's a trunk of future arteries, it's called truncus arteriosus. Since there's something called arteriosus, there's probably something that is called venosus as well. And that's the role of this structure known as sinus venosus. The sinus venosus along with the cardinal veins will majorly form the future veins of the heart. Between the primitive ventricle and the truncus arteriosus, there is a structure known as bulbus cordis. Now blood moves from the ventricles to the arteries, right? A structure that helps forming this outflow tract is known as bulbus cordis. So this is how the heart tube differentiates into different parts. Now soon, each part will start having a polarity, which means it'll know if it's going to form the right side or the left side. So, firstly, the top part of the pink circle is going to be the right ventricle and the bottom part is going to be the left ventricle. As we spoke before, we have bulbous cordis present between the ventricles and the truncus arteriosus. Now for this heart tube to look like a proper heart, it undergoes some twisting. Let's understand that by following this arrow. The first twist takes place in this direction. So when the tube twists like this, all these structures are going to move like this. So by the end of it, all the structures will look something like this. Once this is done, the part right below the right ventricle will be the right atrium and the part right below the left ventricle will be the left atrium. Now you must be wondering that the atria are usually on top and the ventricles are below, right? And that's exactly what happens next. The second twist in this process takes place in this direction. So when everything moves like this, our final structure is going to look something like this. So from a single heart tube, we had a small bulge in the center, then we divided the entire tube into different parts and then we twisted this tube in such a way that it gave us a final structure that looks something like this. So to make it very clear, let's see how this goes. The primitive ventricles have now become the right and left ventricles. The bulbous cordis is present between the ventricles and the truncus arteriosus and the truncus arteriosus is out here giving rise to the main arteries. Then, we have the primitive atrium giving rise to the right and left atria. After this, we have sinus venosus that goes somewhere here and cardinal veins that go somewhere here. And if you don't know what those structures are, it's completely fine because that's what we're going to be focusing on next. Let's now compare this structure to what a final heart looks like. 
I'd recommend not taking notes at this point because we're going to be revisiting this part in much more detail in video number four. So for now, just sit back and understand what's going on so that when we're at video number four, it'll be much easier for you to remember and recall whatever we've spoken about. The right and left ventricles are here and the bulbous cordis is out here serving as the portion between the ventricles and the arteries. The truncus arteriosus giving rise to the pulmonary artery and the aorta and these two structures forming the right and left atria respectively. Then the sinus venous is giving rise to these two structures. The one on top ends up forming the smooth part of the right atrium and the one below ends up forming the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus is basically a vein that collects deoxygenated blood from the muscles of the heart and drains into the right atrium. This structure out here gives rise to the inferior and the superior vena cava. We have now come to the end of this video. You can now choose to revise this topic by using the notes or solve questions on your med workbook or choose to move on to the next video.